Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Pinky Mouse Sisters in the Kitchen. I'm Linda. Uh, Mary is feeling much better, but she's still recovering. Um, haven't heard from little Linda and the boys this morning, but we will later on today. So thank you all for your prayers for them. And when I got up this morning and I always, um, I, my mind is always on being thankful. And I thought about this little song. He woke me up this morning, started me on my way. He's the joy of my salvation. Yes, he is. It's so good to be able to wake up in the morning, put your clothes on, be able to walk in your kitchen, do anything you want to do. And I've thought about so many times, and I'm not going to talk long because I've got to get this in the oven. We've got to put it together and get it in the oven. But we talk about aches and pains and getting old and um, I certainly uh, talk about my share of aches and pains. Y'all know that I have a bad back. I go through problems with my foot sometimes. The heel hurts or has been hurting for the last several weeks. It's not hurting today, but the more I'm on it, the more it hurts. But um, many people um, prepare for retirement and they retire in and die within a few days and a lot of people do not have the privilege of growing old my daddy didn't have that privilege so um, I thank God for another day for every day that he gives us to do something good for humankind so we're making beef enchiladas today and I'm going to I've got several things here and I'm going to be giving you the steps and telling you what I'm putting in it uh, because I don't think it's posted yet, but you see I've got my cheeses and I've got my sauce and my tortillas, but we're going to move over to the stove. I'm hoping this video doesn't freeze when I move it over there, but we're going to get over there and get started cooking. And once I get the meat done, I'll come back over here and assembly and then get it in the um, oven. So bear with me for just a second. Hopefully this is not going to mess up. I've got my oven heated to 375 and there's one thing about these skillets, uh, this is a titanium skillet, it's Pampered Chef, and it's very hot. I found that if you preheat these that your food starts cooking much, much faster. So um, I use um, 964 Hamburger. Now, you do not have to use the 964. I realize that it um, costs more than the other, and it doesn't have as much fat in it. But um, that's what we use, because we try to cut down on fat every way we can. So, I'm going to turn this burner down just a bit. And if you want some extra fat in it, you can do half and half with like a good brown chuck and then half of the good hamburger. But this I don't need fat in because uh, it's going to be enchilada, so I don't need I don't need it to be juicy like you would want a hamburger to be juicy. So I'm going to get this started cooking and using my mixing chop here. And I'm going to wait just a minute before I, before I put these seasonings in it. But you can tell that there's no grease cooking out of this um, because it is 96 forward. We get it at Walmart or Kroger, depending on where you shop. Um, some of the other local stores probably have it too. But um, you can't always find it. We try to keep a few packages in the freezer. But, um, I know this is making a lot of noise. So, um, yesterday morning, before I started cooking, I cleaned up the top of my stove and changed the little burner liners out. And uh, Mike, Mike is usually the one that does that. And he was washing dishes um, when I got through yesterday. He said, Linda, thank you for cleaning up the stove. <laughs> I said, well, you're welcome. I do clean it sometimes. <laughs> it was kind of funny because... 
I think it's surprising. You know, you have to lift the top up and have to get a little brush to clean out from under here, but I don't like crumbs. I don't like messes. So we try to keep it clean. Okay, it's starting to cook. So I'm going to go ahead and put my seasoning in it. And I would probably cook this a little slower, but I want to turn it up, burn up just a pinch. I want to, uh, I want to get this in the oven as quickly as possible. Now this is my salt and pepper, and as a rule, I do, I do um, one part salt, half a part black pepper. So I'm putting a teaspoon of salt in here, and um, this is just table salt. And I'm going to do, I'm not measuring this, but it's about a half a teaspoon of black pepper. Y'all know I love pepper. I'm also going to do um, about a fourth a teaspoon of cayenne. This is a new one that I just opened, so this one's going to have a little bit of kick to it. And just, um, I'm going to do a shake of um, crushed red peppers. And I don't know if y'all know this or not, but these get old too. Um, so if you have some old in your cabinet that you haven't used in a while, throw it away and get you a new one because they do get old and as any spices will. If you have a spice that you don't use a lot, um, keep it in the freezer. So um, that's uh, that will keep them fresh. But we use spices a lot, so um, the ones that we use all the time, I just keep them. We just keep them in the pantry up here. Okay, let's get this going. And uh, I smell that cayenne. It smells good. So I'm going to go ahead and add my onions. And I've got, uh, I don't know, it's probably, it's probably a couple of tablespoons of onions. And I minced it with the food chopper. Um, I don't like big pieces of onion. I know some people don't mind. And um, I think sometimes um, people might laugh at me because I... I do things a little bit different, but I like I like things um, I like my onion. Whoops! I like it chopped fine, so I just mince it with the food chopper. I'm gonna turn this back up because I want this to get done really quick, so I can get this stuff put together. And um, I'm using uh, chopped green chilies, and um, you can use the ones that aren't chopped and chop your own. But I use um, the chopped green chilies. Uh, on the brownie cookies, those were uh, cooked at 350. Uh, this that I'm cooking today, the enchiladas, they're on 375. So um, I've got that. And then I'm going to use some um, fire roasted whole kernel corn in this. I'm not going to use a whole can. I'm going to use about a half cup. But I'll show you all that while, I'm, while this is... Uh, finish cooking. I remind myself of Mama with this noise. Mama was uh, she she was so funny when um, because we lived after she moved back from Texas and I still lived in Mississippi. When I would come home, I'd usually get there late that night, and it was about a six-hour drive because you know a lot of the at, at the beginning of when we first moved to Mississippi, you didn't really, you didn't even have an interstate. You, you drove 80, and then they got the interstate finish. But um, I would come in late at night, and she'd, she'd be so happy that I was home. But what mama is not happy when her kids are home, right? And um, she was saying, Lindsay, she said, you sleep as long as you want to in the morning. I've never been one to sleep in. But when you're younger, you can sleep longer than you can when you get older. For some reason or another, us old people just, we want to be awake every minute that we can so we can make sure we get as much done as possible, or at least that's how the Pinkstons are. I can tell you that for sure. But I did. I, I wanted to sleep the next morning because I was so tired, and she's in the kitchen, and she's pulling out pots and pans, and she's making so much noise. Had to wake me up, so I finally get up and go in there. And she's like, "Did I wake you up?" I said, "Yeah, Mama, you did. You woke me up." Well, I didn't say yeah. I said yes, ma'am. But anyway, it was it was always funny. 
because she wanted us to be up so we could. She already had the day plan. I can guarantee you that. She had her day plan before I ever even got out of bed. Okay, so this is not quite ready, but it's going to be ready in just a minute. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to add some green chilies to this, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to use the whole can. It's not just a tiny bit. I don't care if it's got a little bit of juice in it, but I don't want it to be much. So I'm going to add a spoonful of the green chilies. Now, uh, these are medium. No, these are mild. So these are not hot. And I'll put the rest of these in a bag and put them in the freezer so I can have them for next time. Um, I got the mild because Mike likes a little kick, but he doesn't like things as hot as I do. So um, I don't, um, I try to be aware of that when I'm cooking. And since this is just going to be for us, I want to make sure that it's um, something that he's going to like. Now, I know that a lot of people would eat sour cream on their enchiladas. And when y'all see my recipe, or when you hear me tell it, I'm not using sour cream. I cook with it, but Mike, Mike does not like sour cream on top of anything, so I don't use sour cream. So for those of you who want to use sour cream, by all means use it. And I am aware that that usually goes with enchiladas, but I don't use it for that reason. And um, so I'm going to get another spoon. And I'm going to spoon out about half a cup of this uh, fire roasted corn. This is really good stuff. Okay, that's that's roughly about a half a cup. And I'm just going to put that in there and let it get warm. Mike loves corn. Corn's his favorite vegetable. And if he was in here, he probably would put the whole can in. But I don't want it to just taste like corn. I want it to, um, I want it to have other taste to it, too. Okay, so now I'm going to get my cheese. And I've got, um, I've got two cups of Mexican blend. And in the recipe that's going to be listed on our website when, Linda, when little Linda gets it on there, I've got Sargenta. They didn't have Sargenta the other day, what I wanted, the kind I wanted. They carry Sargenta, but they didn't have the kind I wanted at Walmart. So I just got the crap. This is good, too. It's a Mexican four blend cheese. So I've got two cups of this, and this is roughly a cup, I didn't measure it, but it's roughly a cup of uh, medium cheddar grated. So I'm going to use about half of this. Um, I'm just going to take out about half of it, because we want to save some to go on top. And about half of this. And I'm going to put the rest over here. I'm going to get the lid. I'm going to stir this and I'm going to get the lid and put this back on here and turn the burner off. I just want this to melt. Get it mixed up good. Okay, I'm just going to let that set there a minute, and I'm going to, um, this is my little handle, but I don't want to put it on there just yet. I'm going to move the camera back over here, and um, put my cheeses back in the refrigerator that I'm not using. and then I'll move this over here. Hopefully that didn't mess up anything. Okay, I'm using 
my little my little handle here on my skillet and um, I'm going to take the lid off okay so um, I've got I've got my 9 by 13 baker and I just lightly oiled it and I'm going to let's see if I can get this to where y'all can see it um, I want y'all to see what I'm doing so um, in the recipe it's got um, um, enchilada sauce I think I said enchilada sauce salsa or taco sauce so I've got a can of enchilada sauce and I'm going to use that but I'm also going to mix some taco, some smooth taco sauce in it. So uh, let me get something to put that on. So this is um, a 10 ounce can of red enchilada sauce. I'm just going to pour that in there. And it's not going to take all of this. But I'm going to use probably about, I don't know, this is medium. So this has a little kick to it. It's a little bit spicier than mild, but not as hot as the hot. And this is Ortego, and it's the thick and smooth. And I'm going to pour just a little bit in here, maybe a fourth a cup. And if you wanted to use salsa, if you have your salsa that you've made yourself, I usually make, make some myself, but I'm out, so I'm using this bulk. I'm just going to stir it real quick here give it a good stir so it mixes it up good and um, then I've got my spoon here because I want this to be mixed up good okay I'm gonna put on my food safe gloves because this is gonna be a little messy I don't like gloves but sometimes I use them like when I made the brownie cookies yesterday Sometimes it's just easier to have them on than to try to clean everything out of your hands. And especially, um, uh, you know, it's just kind of yucky to get it around your fingernails and everything. So these are, you can use corn or flour, and some of you might disagree with me, but um, I'm using the flour, and these are, oh goodness, are these 8 inch or 9 inch? I don't even know. Uh, maybe they're 8 inch, I don't know. Anyway, it's a flour tortilla, and I'm going to dip it. I'm going to dip the whole flour tortilla in the sauce. I want it both sides in here. And I know that we have some, uh, some really uh, sweet friends that follow us that know how to make... Uh, uh, delicious Mexican food. I don't claim to be an expert on Mexican food as far as making it. I love to eat it. So I'm just going to lay this flat in here. I'm going to put a pretty generous amount of the cheese mixture. I hope that y'all can see what I'm doing. The meat and the cheese mixture. Because I want, I want it to have enough meat in it that you can taste it. Okay. Can you see that? Okay, so I'm just going to take it and roll it up. And I'll and turn it and put the seam side down. And I'll have to show you when I, when I get it done. I don't want to get this all over. But the seam side down. And then I'm just going to keep doing this until I get them all done. And then we're going to top it with cheese and pop it in the oven. And this is going to need to cook. Whoops, I forgot to get a piece of foil out. I'm going to cover it to start with and cook it for about 20 minutes and then I'm going to uncover it and cook it for another 10 or 15 minutes. Okay. You're just rolling this up like you would a burrito or something. It doesn't take long at all to put it together. It's just, um, I would say prep time uh, I minced the onion with the food chopper, so that didn't take long. And then cooking this meat, I would say prep time about 20 minutes. So if you're if you're timing a supper, you want it to be hot when your spouse gets home from work, 
Uh, whoops, didn't get out enough. I'll have to clean this bag off, but I think this is going to make five. And I think I said my recipe four, but I think this is going to make five or six. Um, so you can kind of tell about how long it's going to take you to put this together uh, to have it hot when uh, you're ready to serve so Now, probably what I would do with this is I would serve it with a fresh garden salad. It's probably what I would serve it with. You could also serve it with um, chips if you wanted to. If you wanted a little crunch, I love texture. So you could definitely serve it with a little chips. Um, okay, this is my last one here. And I'm gonna have extra meat left, so I probably should have put a little bit more meat in these than I did. And I think the recipe said it makes four. Does it say it makes four? But this made five is what it made. And I'm not, I don't want to lose this meat here. So I'm just going to put it in here. Especially since those first two didn't have quite as much meat in it. And I'm going to pour the rest of the sauce in here. So, where's my spatula? So I'm just going to pour the rest of that sauce on there. And then I'm going to finish covering it in cheese. Um, okay. I guess I could show you. I don't want to pick this up yet, but I guess I will because I'm going to have to wipe this off anyway. See, that's five pretty, pretty good size enchiladas. So, I'm covering it in cheese. I'm going to use the rest of the cheddar, and I'm just kind of mixing this. If you want to put all your cheese in one container, you can do it that way. And this is got, going to have lots of good gooey cheese on it. Okay. Now I'll have to get something and wipe this off and clean up my mess here. I've made a good mess. But that's okay. It's going to be good. All right. Let me get, let me grab something and wipe this off. here. Um, I totally made a mess. I don't usually make this big of a mess. Um, this is a clean paper towel. I'm going to wipe all this off because I don't want this to burn in the oven. And I'm going to do a tent top. Now it takes a little bit more foil to do it like this. But I'm going to do it because I don't want the, um, I don't want the foil to stick to my cheese. So this is what it looks like. I'm going to take, and I am using heavy duty foil. I'm going to use a big thing of foil, and y'all might think I'm wasting this. But, um, this is how I want to do it, so this is how I'm doing it. So to keep from, <laughs> a good guess, I barely got it big enough. To keep from it being down on that cheese, I'm just going to tin it like this and bring up the sides. So I'm going to put it in the oven. And I'm going to get this in the oven. I can do that later. I'm going to pop it in the oven. It's 375 degrees.
timer set for 20 minutes. Now, it's not going to be done in 20 minutes. I'm going to remove the foil and finish cooking it. So this is going to be, going to take the full hour, maybe just a tad longer um, for this program today. So, um, y'all bear with me. Let me get some of this out of the way here. This is dirty. So, um, some of you may have, did I set my timer? Yes, I did. Some of y'all may have seen my uh, little singing yesterday and playing on the piano that I did. Um, I'm, sometimes I hesitate to do that because um, um, my voice doesn't sound like it used to. Not to say that I was the best singer in the world, but I did sing and I sang, sang a lot. Mostly I sang with the group, like had, we had a trio that sang in our church. And then of course, when, in younger years, I sang with my siblings and uh, Linnell and Debbie. And we sang a lot in a lot of different places. And um, then when we, later on, you know, in my early 20s, I sang with my trio, Paula and Patricia, and then it was Paula and Pam. And we sang mostly Dottie Rambo songs, but uh, you usually sound better if you've got some harmony in your singing. So anyway, I enjoy playing the piano. I enjoy singing. And um, I, I mostly do it just for my own benefit or when we get together as a family. But um, I, I just wanted to do it yesterday. And uh, I won't mention a name, but I got a call my son about 930 and from a sweet friend that watches us and tell me um, how much it meant to her. To hear those songs and so many of you texted also and said how, how many memories it brought back for you a lot of times um, churches today uh, sing they sing they have a choral and they sing praise songs it's not the old songs that we grew up with and each generation changes um, there there's nothing wrong with with them singing the choral songs and how they do it today but we relate to what we grew up with, and we grew up with the old hymns and singing out of the hymnal. And of course, most of us didn't need the hymnal because we knew the songs by heart, but um, we, we had them for the congregation. So anyway, thank you all who, who watched that. And um, I was thinking about the other day, um, I guess it was actually the last time Mary and I were together and we were talking, must have been on the way home from Houston, we were talking about... Um, when Mike and I lived in Albuquerque and I have always been a person that's been that's lived in one place I mean we grew up and lived in our house all of our life at Daddy Bill I was not we didn't move a lot we had a couple places that Daddy fished at that we just went to stay for two or three months in Nacogdoches County but and then we moved to Mississippi but when Mike and I got married Mike was not used to staying in one place long and it's kind of funny because um, I pretty much made uh, a settler out of him, but we moved several times when we first got married. I hate it. I literally hate it. I mean, I was, I remember when we moved back to Texas in the mid 80s, I told him, I said, you will ever get me away from Texas again. <laughs> And we have moved a few times since then, but it's always been in Texas. And we've been in Jefferson for almost 27 years. So anyway, we lived in Albuquerque for a little while in the, in the 80s, in the early 80s. And uh, we actually transferred there. I was working. We lived in Lexington, Kentucky for just a short time, a little over a year, and I worked at the Marriott Hotel. I was one of the first ones that were hired um, at Griffin Gate. And for you Kentucky friends of ours, y'all probably know where I'm talking now. It was Lexington Marriott Resort at Griffin Gate. And I was one of the first ones that was hired. And I worked there with um, my supervisor, Bobby McCarty. And I transferred from Marriott, uh, from Albuquerque, I mean from uh, Lexington to Albuquerque. 
as the uh, supervisor uh, over communications. So um, it was, uh, it to me, even though I was still hundreds of miles from away from home, I was on the net, I was, I was at the next state over from Texas, and to me that meant a lot. So anyway, I was glad to be back at least close enough that I felt close to Texas. So we lived there for a while and so many memories of Albuquerque and a lot of them are good. Some of them are not good because we went through some really hard times there. We had one vehicle and it was a used M Chevrolet Impala and I don't even know what the year was, but it was an old car and we worked, Mike and I worked different shifts. Um, he worked on one side of town, and for those of you who know Albuquerque, Albuquerque is not a small place. It's it's a big place. And, and then I worked at the Marriott, and then we lived about, oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to say four, maybe four and a half miles from the Marriott. So um, I've had, these were my choices to get home. And, and at part of that time, I worked two jobs, which was not unusual. I've worked two jobs lots of times in my life, but um, they were really spread far apart. I mean, way far apart. So you had the bus system, which you could ride the bus, um, and you had you had across um, Louisiana Avenue, which is the main main drag in Albuquerque. Those of you who know what I'm talking about, I think it's the Winrock Mall that's across from the Marriott. Um, I guess it's still there. It's been a while since I've been to Albuquerque, but um, I could walk across the, the uh, Louisiana Avenue and I could wait on the bus, uh, which was always crowded. I mean, I don't think I ever got a seat to sit on when I did ride the bus, but most of the time I just didn't want to ride the bus, so I would just walk home, and I've done that for many, many, many times, but one time I was walking across there to go to catch the bus because it, it was pouring down rain. And for those of you who live in Albuquerque or have lived in Albuquerque, I haven't checked statistics lately, and I may be wrong, but at the time we were living there, Albuquerque averaged about four inches of rain a year. Well, in East Texas, we can get that at one rain. In one rainstorm, we can get three or four inches of rain. So it's quite a bit of difference from Albuquerque and East Texas. But most of the time, when it rained, you got that four inches all at one time. It was like, it was it rained one time and that was it. They called it the monsoons. So it was one of those days that it was literally coming a rainstorm. And I was, I was stopped at the light and I was walking to cross over Louisiana and then went on the bus. And this woman drove up in a beautiful Cadillac. And she rolled down the window, you know, they were electric windows, and she said, uh, get in, I'll give you a ride. And I said, I can't get in your car, I'm soaking wet. Leather seats, no, 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 get in, get in, get in. And I was so embarrassed, because I knew I was just gonna fill her car with water. And so um, I got in the car and she took me across the street, which was very, very sweet. But, um, uh, most of the time, if it wasn't raining, I just I just went ahead and walked home because I just I don't like waiting. I don't wait well. Kingston's don't. We we are doers and we like to get things done and we like to do things at our own pace and which is in full speed as a rule. Uh, not quite as fast as it used to be because we're older, but in our minds we're still going full speed anyway. But um, we would Mike and I would walk um, to the grocery store. And we had a car, but uh, times were really hard back then. And um, we would walk like, I don't know, half a mile or more to the grocery store and carry our groceries back to the little apartment that we lived in. And uh, uh, it, was, um, it was just, I mean, we li literally lived from paycheck to paycheck. And uh, um, so as the operator, as the um, supervisor over the, the communications, which is the operator, hotel operator. Um, I ha I had the opportunity to know when they needed babysitters or when they needed um, when they were having an event and they needed coats checked. And I learned that from Lexington, from my boss, because she did the coat checks in Lexington. 
I babysit in Lexington. When there was a call come in for a babysitter, I got to babysit, which I made some extra money doing that, and um, which was very nice. Uh, $50 back in the early 80s was a lot of money, and that's what I made when I babysitted was uh, $50, uh, $50. So when, we, when I got to Lexington, I mean, when I got to Albuquerque, um, I talked to my boss and I said, you know, we've got this event coming up. Who's going to check coats? And um, he said, we don't have anybody to check them. And they had a room with a long counter. It was a high counter. It was, I'm, I'm barely five feet tall. And this counter probably come up to my shoulders. It was very, very high. And it was probably, it was probably as long from, I don't know, it was probably 20 or 25 feet long this counter. And so we had this event coming up and so I, I finished my shift um, and then I had a little break from the time they started. I didn't go anywhere because I didn't have anywhere to go and didn't have a car. So I just hung out until time for the, them to come in and start checking their coats. And, uh, and these people, they had some very expensive meat coats and meat stoles, full length meat coats. I couldn't even begin to imagine what they cost, but several thousand dollars. So I had a roll of tickets for coat checks, and um, the room that we put the coats in had just one little hanger, a freestanding, if, you, if you've ever worked in retail, and I have it, but if you've ever worked in there and seen the, the uh, gondolas where they, uh, those little freestanding racks where they take clothes and hang on the hangers, well, they had one of those in this room, and it wasn't very big. And um, the manager of the hotel was uh, Tom, uh, Tom Sorelli. He went from there to New Orleans. And then uh, Tom Day was the assistant manager. And so I had told them, I'd done this one week, and I just didn't have room to hang my coats, or to hang the coats that people brought. And I had told them that week in the staff meeting, I said, we need some hangers, we need some places to hang these coats because we had several events coming up. Uh, Maxie Anderson uh, lived in Albuquerque. He was a well-known balloonist, which they have hot air balloon events in um, Albuquerque. And um, I got to meet him while I was there. And uh, uh, there was a lot of people that came from all over the world to these events. So they said, "Okay, well we'll get we'll get some um, we'll get some hangers in there. We'll put it on our list, you know, blah blah blah." So the next Friday night, when we had this big event coming, there was people coming in by the droves. I mean, one couple after another. I had the whole counter full, and here I am tearing these tickets off. Laying them on top of the coat, putting another coat on top of that, and putting the ticket on top of that. And I did that with literally dozens of coats. The whole counter was stacked up with, with these fur coats. So where did I start putting them? I started putting them on the floor. I had nowhere else to put them. So the coats were stacked up on the counter, and they were stacked up all along the floor with these tickets not attached to the coat, just laying on top of it. These two managers came by that evening when I was doing this, and they literally looked like they had seen a ghost. There was 20, I, I don't know how much these coats cost, but 20, $25,000 coats stacked up all over the floor. It was hilarious to me because even though it was terrifying, because I had already told them I needed something to put these coats on, but they didn't provide it, so I was just doing the best I could. So the next week, I go down there to do my event, and that room is full of racks to hang coats on. It was so funny. It was, it was hilarious. Every time I think about that, it was just, it was so funny. So, a lot of people with the tips that they would give, uh, they would put, um, a lot of people, some people gave bills, but uh, again, you have to remember this was in the 80s. So uh, a lot of people would give change. And I remember one time going home, it was, I probably got home like two or three o'clock that morning and counting the change. And I think it was like 
I don't know how much it was that I mean, it was, it was two or three hundred dollars that I had made in tips. And you talk about somebody being happy. I didn't even make that work in five days that week. And I made all this money in tips. So I was really, really thankful that I had got that little extra job that I had that. And I did that for a while. I didn't do it very long, but I did do it for a while. And I think about, I think about that so many times. And, um, and then it was time for the fair. And the state fair was held in Albuquerque at the fairgrounds. And uh, so I, I had made peanut brittle literally for years for the church. I made, I, I have made, I wouldn't even know how to guess how many thousands of bags of peanut brittle I had made by myself. So I decided I'm going to sell peanut brittle at the fair this year. And you know, when my husband can tell you, my sister can too, my brothers, when you get something in your head, we'll do our very best to make sure that that happens. So I was in the bathroom one day when I was working at the hotel and uh, um, I heard some workers in there talking about the fair. And uh, they didn't have any idea that I was thinking about getting a booth there. And they were like, they were talking about wishing they could sell at the fair, sell something at the fair. And there's like, well, you can't, you can't get a booth at the fair. It's all political. Uh, they, the same people gets the booths, gets them every year, and you cannot get a booth at the fair. And I thought, hmm, I'll just see about that. So, and I said this to myself. So I get home that night and I told Mike, I said, I have three weeks of vacation coming. The fair was almost a month long. And I said, I have three weeks of vacation coming. We can make this many bags of peanut brittle. Now this is, this is my mind calculating this. And we can be ready. If we make every night in my days off up until the time of the fair, we can have enough peanut brittle made to sell at the fair. And Mike said, okay, if you think we can do it. What I wasn't calculating is that we were in a high altitude. I, I had never made peanut brittle in a high altitude. So it took me probably a good week to adjust the recipe to learn how to make the peanut brittle. So it turned out the way I was used to making it in Texas and Mississippi. And we threw away lots of lots of batches trying to make it, and uh, so we finally got it made. And Mike said, "Okay, now what are you going to do now?" And I said, "Well, just hide and watch." So that's one of our little sayings: hide and watch. Um, so I um, made up a, a couple of batches, and on my day off, I went to the state fair commission. I walked in, and um, I told them that I wanted to see the commissioner. And they said, do you have an appointment? I knew his name, I had already looked that up. And uh, I said, no, I don't. She said, well, he's busy, he can't see you. And I said, well, it won't take long. I just need to talk to him just a minute. I want to drop something off. And I had my little bags there. And she said, uh, okay, well, wait just a minute. And she come back and she said, okay, well, he'll see you, but he's only got about five minutes. And I said, that's good, that's all I need. So I walked in and I took my peanut brittle out of the bags and I set it on his desk and I introduced myself and I said, um, I brought y'all some peanut brittle to sample and I'd like for you to just pass it around the office and um, I'm gonna check back with you in a few days. I want a booth at the fair this year. And he started laughing and he said, um, you said your name was Linda and I said yes. He said, these booths are taken from year to year. We don't have any extra spaces. And um, I said, well, just, just try it. Just try it and tell me what you think. So in about two days, I got a call from the commissioner. And he said, you want to come down and get your contract? And I said, I'll be there. Told him the day I'd be there. I had no money to pay for the booth. I did not know how I was going to pay for it. So I go across the street before I go to the bank over there and I walked in and I told him I wanted to take out a loan. And I told him what, it, what I needed it for. 
I'm going to stop just a minute because I'm going to take the uh, foil off of my uh, enchiladas and let it finish cooking. I'll be back in just a second. I'll turn this around here so y'all can see what I'm going to do. So it's starting to look good. I hope y'all can see that. Isn't that look good? And so I'm just going to lift it out of the foil. Yeah, I'll get it up in a second. This is what it would be nice if you had somebody here to, to lift that out for me. But I don't, so I'm going to manage. Okay, so I'm going to put it back in the oven. That looks so good. And I'm going to set the timer for about 12 more minutes. And let that finish cooking. Hopefully that didn't bump too bad. So um, I walked in and talked to the banker and told him what I wanted. And he said and how much I needed to borrow. And um, of course he wanted to know that I have collateral. I said, no, I don't. Of that old used car we had. That's all we owned. We rented our apartment, so we didn't um, have a house or anything. We didn't have any assets. So um, he said, do you really think that you can make money doing this? And I said, oh, I know I can. And I told him how many bags I was going to make and how much money I would make off of it. He said, have a seat over there. And he loaned me the money, had the check written out. I went down to the uh, commissioner and I paid for my booth. And now keep in mind that there was a candy lady was the name of a business in Albuquerque at the time. I don't know that she's still there, but more than likely she is. She had a, a brick and mortar store in Old Town. And uh, I think later on they, they had another store too. And she always had a booth at the fair. But uh, we were in we were in one of the buildings, and uh, we had our displays set up. We had professional boxes that we had it all stacked in, and we had to be there from ten o'clock in the morning until the fair closed at night for uh, almost a month. Or it was over twenty one days, and it was very very long hours, very long hours. And me and Mike and uh, Mama, Mama came out and helped us, and we would take turns you know, taking breaks and going, getting us something to eat and coming back and going to the restroom and stuff like that. And uh, when people first started coming by, they didn't know what the peanut butter was. They thought they were tortillas. And so we had, we had samples, you know, a long time before COVID. So we had samples and we had, you know, it was all sanitary and everything. So uh, we gave out a lot of samples, but we sold every bag that we, that we had made. Excuse me. The last night of the fair, we hadn't been out on the midway at all. Let me get me a bottle of water. I'm doing so much talking here. <coughs> here, I'm getting choked. So, um, the last night of the fair, we decided, well, let's go out on the midway. And let's just, you know, ride a couple of rides. I mean, we were, we were in our 30s. We wasn't kids, but we were young. And so we decided that we would go out and ride a couple of rides. So I've always been a scary cat. Don't like roller coasters. Anything that's a scary ride, I didn't want to ride. But we settled on two rides. And we were so tired. We were giddy crazy. I mean, that's how tired we was. Mama had already gone home, so it was just Mike and I. And um, Mike had bought a new pair of pants at a men's store. And they were Sansabelle pants. Some of you men probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, they were they were dress trousers and um, and quite expensive. They weren't cheap. 
Um, and it's kind of a treat for him to get these pants because, um, you know, of course, we made a little bit of money at the fair, so we had a little bit of money. But he had these new pants on. So the first ride we rode was this little, I want to call it a roller coaster. It wasn't like roller coasters today, but it was a high coaster. It just wasn't as big as roller coasters are today. So we knew there was a ride in the fair that year that they had had some mechanical issues with. We didn't know it was the one we got on. So we rode this, and after we got off, we found out that's the one that they had the mechanical issues with. And I wouldn't have got on it for nothing if I'd have known it. But we did, and it was okay, and it scared me, but it was okay. So the other ride that we chose was water bumper boats. And you only could get one person in a boat. And um, so Mike got in his, and I got in mine, and the water, oh my goodness, that it smelled so bad because it was the same water that had been there all the days of the fair, and that um, fuel from those... Um, from those little motors from the boats. It was just horrible. It smelled so bad. <laughs> so we were in these boats and you you know, they're time. You only get to, to ride for a few minutes. And so they rang the little bell and it was time for everybody to come in. They're on the loudspeaker, you know, come on back to the shore. Your time's your ride's over. And so Mike got back. When he was getting out, he got out of the boat and the whole back end of his pants ripped out. So he was just about to have a fit because he knew his pants had ripped. And, um, uh, you know, of course you could see, if, if anybody was looking, they probably wasn't, but if anybody was looking, they could have seen his white undershorts. So uh, he was standing out there trying to hide so nobody would see him. And who's left out there in the middle of the water in their boat that can't get it back to shore? Me. And then they kept saying, come on back here, your time's up. They thought I just didn't want to come back. Can you imagine? I was about ready to just get out of that boat and wade through that murky, awful water to get back to the shore because my boat would not, it wouldn't guide right, it wouldn't stir. So I'm out there trying to get it to go out the guys on the loudspeaker, come on back to the shore, your time is up. And I mean, he was doing this over and over and over and I was just about ready to, to just fit to be tied. I mean, I was so mad, <laughs> so I could not get that boat back. Finally, I don't know how God must have helped me. I finally got the boat back where I could get out and there here Mike is, you know, he didn't know that I couldn't get it back either. He was just thinking I was just staying out there because I was having fun, which I was not having fun. And then as soon as we got back, um, and we walked, we walked to the fair every day too. We were several blocks from it and it was easier to walk than it was to drive and have to pay the park. So, um, we got out of that fairgrounds that night and of course we had to get all of our stuff our boxes and everything out after they closed the midway down and everything but that was that night i will never forget that night it was so hilarious and so frustrating and everything wrapped in one we were so glad the fair was over you know we made a little bit of money and it was just it was just crazy so the next year we got the contract again we sold Camp Riddle again, and um, and then we moved back to Mississippi after then. And the third year, we got the contract in the mail, but it just didn't, uh, it, it wasn't feasible for us to drive and make Peanut Riddle and drive to Miss, from Mississippi to Albuquerque to sell again. But I always think about that so many times. We've always been taught all of our life. Where there's a will, there's a way. And if you want something hard enough and you work hard enough, you can make it happen. Now, I can tell you that none of this was easy. I mean, we worked so hard. And I can tell you so many things that happened during the time that we were making this peanut brittle. The faucets broke in that little, in the little house that we were renting. We had to have uh, uh, the landlord come out and put new faucets in it. Uh, we were literally sleeping in shifts 
we would sleep an hour or two while the other one was cooking and then peanut brittle and then the other one would lay down and rest and the one would get up and they would go in there. It was a lot, a lot of work. We had a lot of obstacles that we overcame, but we, we had a goal and we set it and we, and we got through it. So um, sometimes you think about, especially now, uh, in, in our older years, all the things that you went through that probably a sane person wouldn't have even tried. You know? You're working full time and you're using every hour of the day to do something. And then you take your vacation that you've accumulated for two years and use it to work again. I mean, most people would think you were absolutely nuts. But we, and we might have been a little bit nuts, but we did it. But we have so many memories like that. And um, so many times in Albuquerque, when, um, and not just Albuquerque, but other places too, where we've lived, that, um, you know, you always try to, I associate decades with where I lived at that time, um, what I was doing, and that's how I, I go back and I think, what was I doing in my 20s, what was I doing in my 30s, 40s, 50s, so on. And um, it's kind of amazing to see um, all the places that I've got to go and got to uh, see. A lot of it was when I was working and traveling uh, full time that um, I would have never been able to do if I was doing it and having to pay for it. But because I was doing it with my work, I got to see so many different uh, wonderful places. God's creation, God's beautiful country and uh, really, really enjoyed it. And there were, um, there were a lot of times on the road when, and this is, this is in the more recent um, years when I traveled uh, full time and we drove fleet vehicles. And um, I, I know there was one time when I left, I, I was working in Baltimore, uh, not Baltimore, DC. I was working downtown DC and then from there I went to Danville uh, Virginia, it's, which is a very short drive. I don't know, hundred and something miles, not far at all. But it was in the evening, it was because it was late when I left DC that day, and um, my tire pressure light came on, and I was on the interstate and between exits and between towns, and of course that just you know that just scares you half to death when you think you're fixing to have a flat at night, you know, on the interstate. But um, I managed to get to an exit and got some air put in the tire. And then the next day when I got to Danville, I went to, um, we had maintenance cars that we used for the fleet vehicles. And I went to a tire place and got some tires put on the car. But, um, and I do not say this um, bragging. I do not say this to think that it was because of me or because of my goodness. But uh, because I know accidents can happen anytime, at any place, and a lot of times they're not even your fault. Um, the way we go to town here, the back way, there's lots of little side roads and they sell, uh, they, um, they do logging. And so there's constantly trucks or, or pickups or cars coming out of these little side roads and they can come out at any time. And I, and I understand that. But, um, Not, not one time in all the years that I traveled in recent years, and I've had plenty of car trouble in, in my younger years when I was do, um, working for the church and um, selling peanut brittle and stuff like that. But in recent years, um, of all the hundreds of thousands of miles that I drove, went through several fleet vehicles. Several of them were new. Some of them were the first two or three I drove were used, um, but several were new. Not never had a flat on the road. I did not put so much as a scratch on any car that I ever drove. We had people that done the same thing that I did that were killed in accidents. We had people that were hurt very bad in accidents. And so many people uh, had bump ins and um, uh, parking garages, 
remember, remember the first one in San Francisco. We were staying at, Oak, I think it was Oakwood Apartments. It was corporate apartments that we were staying at. And I literally do not like parking garages because there's so many columns. And we say at lots of hotels were in cities where we parked in parking garages. And um, um, this particular one was really bad. I mean, it was, it was the parking spaces were so tiny. And I don't know how many people, but several people that uh, was working at the time at the same place that I was working, the same job, uh, bumped into either the columns or another car in this in this specific parking garage. But um, I was very, very blessed that um, that I never had anything like that happen to me. And I, my buzzer's gone off, so I'm going to get my uh, enchiladas out of the oven. I've got to get a, a little uh, trivet here to put them on. And we're going to see what they look like and what they taste like. So let me grab a, a little saucer here. A lot of noise. Bear with me for a second. And thank y'all for reminding me of pictures. I did not take a picture of uh, something that I made the other day. And y'all even reminded me and I didn't take a picture of it. But I'm going to try my best to remember to take a picture of this. These look really, really good. Don't those look delicious? Now you're supposed to let them rest for a minute, but um, because we've already been on here an hour, I'm going to go ahead and take one out and put it on this plate. And see that extra sauce kind of helped bubble. I don't know if I got this too far or not far enough. Okay. Uh, since I buried all the pan, it shouldn't stick in here. Make sure I can get this out. I wish my sister and them had some of these because they look really good. Doesn't that look delicious? Some of my stuff is left in here. But I'll leave that in there. So, I'm going to just see if I need a... No, I don't need no knife. This is going to be very, very hot. Doesn't that look delicious? I'm going to have to let it cool a minute before I taste of it. I guess maybe I can get a little bit of bite here. Thank you, Jesus, and don't let this burn my mouth. Mmm. That is so good. It's got a kick to it. You can taste the green chilies. And that corn is so tasty, that fire roasted corn. You do want to be careful with your salt because there's a lot of salt in the cheese. So if you are if you watch your salt, you might want to cut down a little bit on the salt, not put a whole teaspoon in it. It's not too salty for me, but the cheese does add salt to it. I hope y'all enjoyed this. I hope you'll share it with somebody. Uh, be sure to like our video. Um, be sure to tell your friends about us. And we're playing it by ear for next week. Um, but we are, we're hoping that Mary feels like being on some next week. If she doesn't, I'll be here. We may be doing a little short videos over the weekend. She may get on and do something herself. Just talk a few minutes. 
So uh, make sure that y'all uh, don't forget us um, and uh, make sure you keep watching even though um, this has been a little trial period with us, with us not having uh, to be together. But I know that y'all are so supportive and y'all are going to keep watching me or keep watching Mary, whichever one that um, that we have to, however we have to do it until we know it's safe to be back together. So stay safe, stay well, be sure to show kindness to someone and count your blessings. We all have so much to be thankful for. And like Molly always said, we all have more than what we used to have. And, and God is just so good to us and um, to let us live in this wonderful country and to let us be able to get up and do what we want to do. And um, I appreciate that so much. I love y'all. Mary loves y'all. Continue praying for Mary, little Linda, and the boys. And uh, we hope, and thank you, Carla, for being behind the scenes today with me. And we hope to see y'all again next week. And God bless. And be sure to make this. We'll get these recipes posted as soon as little Linda feels like it. Love y'all.